I'm Esther and you're watching the Homestead Skill of the Month Club. We're doing old-fashioned cooking this month and what you're about to see is a tutorial on how to make the perfect slow roasted baked chicken. But I'm not going to stay and do the cooking at my house. We're actually headed over to Luana's home. The part of the skill of the month club that I love the best is sharing and exchanging ideas and information. I feel like we've seen me cook plenty, seeing as how this is my channel. So I thought, even though I make a baked chicken almost every week of the entire year, of chickens that I raise myself, I thought let's go find out what kind of expertise and tricks and tips we can get from another excellent cook. So Luana Bassett was willing to invite me into her home and indeed she has some tricks for us. Let's check it out. We're gonna learn just the basics of roasting a chicken and maybe a few secrets and also why it's so good to to bake a chicken um, with the bone in. This chicken has a lot of fat on it, but I'm gonna leave it on there. What I want to do is when we're finished eating this chicken, take the carcass and make bone broth, chicken noodle soup, um, and that will get flavor. Even though it's fat, the fat will be skimmed off, but there's still nutrients and flavor in the fat. Um, it's been washed and it's been sitting here and it's nice and dry. If it's still a little wet, you can take a, a clean cloth or a paper towel and pat it dry. And that will help the herbs stick to it better and um, it won't run off as, as much. I've taken out the giblets. I boiled them till they were tender. We'll feed the liver to our dog and my husband likes the heart and and the gizzards, so he'll eat that, and um, then we can use the broth in our bone broth. So really, really simple rub. Um, I have some fresh cracked pepper, pink Himalayan sea salt. This is a teaspoon. It sounds like a lot, but um, it's mellower when you cook with than table salt, mm. so it's okay. A teaspoon of parsley, about a half a teaspoon of rosemary. This is all dry. And and then the same, about a half a teaspoon of, or a teaspoon of sage. On time, time, we've got to get our time in there. And those are your basic, basic chicken herbs. I'm going to work my fingers under the skin and loosen that up. I'm not going to take the skin off. Some people are afraid to get their hands on chicken. And I have a daughter like that, and she wears, put some gloves on if you're, you know, grossed out about <laughs> handling meat. Some people are. So, anyways, now that I am going to only use this for the chicken, I'm not worried about cross-contamination. I'm going to sprinkle it all over, and I'm going to just really rub it in. And I'm going to put some under the skin and rub that in on that breast. On the wings and the legs. I'm going to flip it over and do the same on the back. Now, that's rubbed in really, really, really well. We want to take some sea salt, <laughs> oh, about a half a teaspoon, and rub it on the inside of the carcass. I'm rubbing sea salt on the inside, and that also helps that you don't have, um, it helps with flavor, and it also helps with um, blood um, that sometimes coagulates, uh, and it helps it, um, seal in the juices. So what I'm going to do is have a little nosegay. A nosegay is just a bouquet of herbs. This is fresh herbs. I uh, have some in the garden. I purchased the rosemary at the store um, and I have a uh, time growing. Nosegays are also good luck and um, so you can make them t just tie 
um, some kitchen twine around it and dry it or fresh, but I'm going to stick that on the inside and that's going to help give a lot more um, flavor and aroma to our kitchen and to our yummy chicken. Let me ask Esther. Do you usually bake your chicken breast side up or breast down? I usually do breast down. Breast down. That's how I do it. And that's how my mom did it. And I, I um, last week I cooked two chickens, one breast side up and then one breast side down. And the breast side down was much more moist in the mm. breast and in the legs than the breast side up. However, the breast side up was a lot prettier. We're gonna cook this, we're gonna put it in a roaster, and I'm gonna uncover, bake it at um, 400 degrees for 15 to 30 minutes, just to brown it, and then I'm gonna turn it down to 325. If I was baking a beef roast, I could brown it on a skillet first and to get it brown but if you uh, brown it it seems to seal in the juices and um, also it looks prettier that way so I'm gonna get out the roaster and we'll get it in the oven I don't have a rack in here so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get some carrots and I'm gonna lay some carrots on the bottom and they're gonna be my rack to set my chicken on just rinse them off and cut off the old ends. Okay, it's gonna sit it right on top, breast side down, inside the roaster. I'm gonna pour that right on top. It's gonna go in the oven with the lid off at 400 degrees for 15, 20 minutes, maybe 30. We'll just keep an eye on it and see how it browns. 20 minutes at 400 uncovered and then she's going to cover it up and do another three hours at 325. If you have a meat thermometer, if you put it right, right in between the chicken breast but don't hit the bone, the thickest part of your chicken breast and it should range between 140 and 160 but I prefer it on the 160 side. Chicken, I prefer well cooked. Um, however, you don't want it dry. Halfway through, I just basted it. I take some of the juices that have dripped off and uh, spooned it on top to kind of keep the uh, the skin golden and and moist. But we'll turn it over, and you can see how moist. Even the legs are very, very moist and tender. And juicy so but it's not as pretty you're just gonna have to taste it and see see all the herbs after I pulled off the skin all the herbs that were still on the chicken and all that yummy flavor is down in the meat would you like to try the chicken tell me what you think there you go you like it good That's a beautiful chicken, isn't it? Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us, and thank you so much, Lawana Bassett, for taking the time to let us hang out in your kitchen doing the perfect slow-roasted baked chicken. If you do this recipe, let us know how it goes. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.